Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, surveying uh, as, as it pertains to statistics. Um, so one of the things we need to talk about first is what it means to take a census versus a sample. Um, so when you're doing surveys, uh, you could uh, theoretically send it to everyone um, in your population. So for example, if I wanted to find the height of people in my school, I could take a census. I would go around and ask every single person in the school, how tall are you? Or I would probably actually measure them. Uh, that way they can't lie about it. Um, so that's a census. Um, or sometimes if you don't have the money, uh, census can be very expensive. Or the time, because I do take a lot of time to ask everybody, you may only take a sample. So I may only ask one class um, uh, for their heights and then let that represent the, the entire population. Uh, so a census is everyone in your population. A sample is when a few people represent many or all of them. So that's census versus sample. And so your next question might be, well, how do you decide who goes into your sample? Uh, well, there's uh, five different ways that we talked about in class uh, for making up a sample. Um, I'll tell you what they are real quick. So number one, you've got SRS. And that's a simple, random sample. Uh, number two, you've got... Um, uh, well, I'll do this out of order. Stratified, random sample. And actually, I think I'm just going to erase all of these and write it out, uh, the first word, because they're all SRS. So, uh, simple random sample is generally the one that's abbreviated SRS. Uh, you've also got a systematic random sample and stratified random sample. Um, so these are the good guys. Uh, these are the ones you want to use. There's also a couple bad methods of sampling. Uh, for example, convenience. Not a good method of sampling. Uh, uh, it, it would just be convenient sampling, not random sampling, which is part of why it's bad, because uh, there's no random to it. And then you've got voluntary sampling. So again, the first three here are good sampling techniques, uh, and this, the last two are bad sampling techniques. So what, what, are, what do each of these things mean? Uh, well, a simple random sample is where everyone that's in your, your sample is chosen at random. So for example, what I might do is I might assign everyone in my school a number and then choose numbers at random uh, to be included in the survey. Um, and that eliminates you know, a lot of stereotypes or biases that might come up. Um, it makes it purely by chance that you get included. So it's fair to everyone. Um, systematic is where you might uh, choose a number at random. Like, let's say I picked the number 5. Um, and then I'd look at every fifth person uh, in my population. And those would be included in my sample. Um, so... Uh, those are the first two. They're very, very random. The third one kind of uh, includes one of the first two, depending on which one you like better or which one you can afford. Uh, so a stratified is where you section up your people into certain uh, groups. We call them strata. Uh, and these groups have to be homogeneous, meaning that they're all of, uh, everyone in, in, in a group is the same. All right, so hypothetically, for a stratified random sample, um, let's say maybe my population in my school has 2,000 people, and I only want to survey 100 of them. Um, so my sample size is going to be 100 people. And maybe at my school, 70% of my population of 2,000 play sports, and 30% do not play sports. Um, so when I'm picking my people in my sample, my 100 people, I want it to represent my population very, very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick uh, 70 people uh, from the sports category and 
30 people from the non-sports category. Um, that way, of the 100 people in my sample, it's very representative of uh, the backgrounds that I might want to look at. Um, so that everyone gets a fair chance to be included and that my sample is um, representative of the population. So once you, to pick these, you're not just saying I want you, 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 you. Uh, you're using either simple random samples or a systematic random sampling method uh, to choose these 70 and 30 people. Uh, but the stratified just helps you divide it up and figure out how many of each, uh, each set of people do you want to look at first. Convenience sampling is uh, a bad method. You do not want to use that. And that's just where you're using the most convenient set of data or the most convenient sample um, to create your sample. So for example, um, you might only go to one restaurant and survey their people when you really wanted to come up with a sample for uh, the entire city. So you only visited one place because that's the most convenient uh, you don't really want to go to like 10 or 20 or 30 different businesses and survey them. So you only go to one. Um, in other words, you're sampling from the people that you have available. Um, and then voluntary sampling is where uh, you put your survey out there so that people can volunteer to take it or not. Um, that one's bad because not only is it not random, uh, but also you're only going to get probably two opinions. Uh, those who care a lot and those who care a lot in the opposite direction. So those who, feel, those who feel very strongly, very positive, strong feelings about the subject at hand, or those who have very strong negative feelings about the subject at hand. Um, so these two here, you do not want to use them. Uh, these three are good. Um, so even if you have the best sampling method in the world, uh, problems can still come up with your uh, your survey. So one of the things that happens is uh, you might get a sampling bias. Um, so uh, one of the sampling biases is where you, you didn't really pick a good sampling design, like you chose convenience or voluntary, um, one of those sampling methods, or uh, you could um, come up with an under coverage bias. Under coverage. Um, and what happens there is, um, for example, you may only sample people at a girls' volleyball game um, when you really want to look at how everyone feels about all of the different sports. So if you're only testing people from that demographic, um, then you're only getting those opinions. And several people in your survey or uh, in your sample might be underrepresented. Uh, another example there, um, going back to the stratified, let's say our population was 70% sports and 30% non-sports. And somehow in our sample we round up with 80% uh, of our sample was non-sports. They don't play any sports. And only 20% played sports. Well that sample um, the people that play sports are underrepresented. They have an undercoverage. Um, so that would be not good for them, and it would not represent our population at all. So if your sample comes out vastly different from your population, then you have a problem. Um, that's one of the sampling biases. Um, and that comes in with your design. So you would, you would choose to make that problem happen. Um, so, for example, two of the biggest ones here would be um, interviewer bias, and this one is probably your fault as well. So this is where um, the person who is giving the survey might cause uh, the results to go one way or the other. So, for example, um, if your boyfriend or girlfriend is asking you, uh, would you ever cheat on me? Well, obviously, you're probably not going to tell them, yes, I'm going to cheat on you, uh, because you know, they probably dump you on the spot. Um, so the, the person who, who asked the question, uh, depending on who they are, that might influence how you uh, vote one way or the other. Um, another one would be um, 
wording. So maybe the survey is badly worded. So for example, if you're asking whether or not people support guns, uh, right before you ask their opinion, you probably shouldn't say that 90% of crimes committed uh, are because of people who have permits to guns and don't know how to control them or something like that. You don't want to quote some random statistic and word the question so that obviously they're going to go with one direction or another. Um, so there's two other uh, biases that can come up with your survey that can cause problems. Um, one of the other ones is a non-response bias. Um, and that typically happens when maybe you're trying to do a survey by mail uh, because people just don't want to take the time to respond by mail. Uh, so maybe you sent out a thousand surveys and you only got back 600. Um, that would probably be a non-response bias where people just didn't respond to your uh, survey so you didn't get enough uh, data to make an accurate picture of what is happening with your sample size. So um, this is not a design problem. This could happen with anybody. So even if you have the most perfect sampling method and everything goes great, uh, this could still bias your results. Uh, so the, the main thing to note here is that biased results are useless. They have no value whatsoever. Uh, so if you are sampling from people and your results end up biased, you can't use them. They don't tell you anything about the population you're trying to describe. Um, so on the test, some of the things you'll have to do is figure out you know, whether something is biased or not or what kind of bias uh, is being used. Um, and you have to determine the sampling methods that you might use. So for example, if you're standing in line in the cafeteria, and you're asking every eighth person um, what their favorite food is. Um, well, if you're asking every eighth person at random, uh, then that would be a systematic sampling method. Uh, if you're just asking random people, uh, and there's no order to it whatsoever, um, that would be a simple random sample, um, or an SRS. And then if you're taking every fifth athlete um, and every fifth non-athlete and asking them um, and kind of stratifying your data, that would be a stratified random sample. Um, so know what the samples are and know what the biases are. Um, you will see some questions like that on the test.